it's a Mario time! Woohoo! 30 years after the first terrible movie, and yes, it's still terrible, don't lie to yourselves, Mario is finally back to the big screen in a new, proper movie. Gun the sci-fi, gun the terrible designs, gun the lack of respect for the source material, and get everything that people love about Mario in here. Now, I'm probably not saying something new to any one of the people watching this video. It's the new Mario movie, you've most likely seen it based on the insane amounts of money it's making. And I'm not gonna say anything you don't know when I say that this movie isn't doing super well critically, and that every Mario fan world their soul isn't pissed about it. Critics vs Audiences is honestly a tale that is all this time at this point, and this is not the first nor last time we'll hear about it. But I feel this time it got bigger than previously, which might put a lot of pressure on the Mario movie than it ever needed to have. Regardless though, it's fucking Mario. Of course people will go watch it regardless of the reviews, and I am here to say that it is perfectly fine. The Super Mario Brothers movie is perfectly fine, which is honestly what I expected it to be when I walked in to watch it. It's incredibly fun, it's well animated, it has some funny moments, and if you're a fan of Mario, you're going to be in heaven. However, if you're not a fan of Mario, it's a basic, run-of-the-mill, unoriginal, rushed, pretty lucky movie which might make you wonder what the hype for the games was all about to begin with. I must stress this again. This is a fine enough movie. I had a good time watching it, a great time even. And if you are a fan of Mario, then you probably already saw it a bunch of times and you love it, and I'm happy that you love it, and that you now have a good Mario movie. Then again, the critics do have some good points, which are valid. Well, most of them do anyway. I am not touching this crazy bitch's review though, all I'm gonna say is that whoever gave her a critic license should be fired. Before we go on any longer though, there will be some spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it before carrying on with the video. Unless you don't care, but either way, let's -a go! Woohoo! As a form of caution, I stress again that I think the movie is fine. I enjoyed it. I completely get why fans of Mario are loving it, and by all means continue to love it. Now is the point where I say that you need to take into consideration references and good animation aren't enough to make a movie amazing. I'm not saying Mario needs to be Martin Scorsese deep or something like that, but I'd expect a movie to have a bit more focus on the plot and characters rather than sacrifice those for references and callbacks. Probably as good a time as any to mention that I am not the biggest fan of Mario. Not that I think the games are bad, on the contrary, Super Mario Odyssey, I'd argue, is one of the best 3D platformers ever made, if not the best. I am just not a fan of Mario as a character. Like Mickey Mouse, he is basically just a nice straight man, with everyone around him having much more charm and charisma than him. I like Luigi more, I like Bowser more. Peach, okay I don't like Peach, but you get the idea. So a movie about him, a character that I don't really care for, and has no gameplay to distract me from how actually bland he is, needs to keep me invested in him. And... <coughs> Mario is, well, Mario. And that's sure all that I can say about him. He and Luigi get the backstories, which are kinda nice, but I also scoffed at because I thought they were kinda lame. Like, the trope of the boys who don't live up to family expectations is so lame and generic, and yes, I know, Mario, but again, this is a movie. A movie needs a lot more than this because I don't have the gameplay that helps me ignore it if I don't care. I know that you need to add backstories in a movie, but this doesn't really do anything to make Mario deeper or give him any dimension as a character. He's been mocked for his tenacity and how he doesn't give up despite anything, and it serves him well in the end and it's a good message to teach, but that's really doing the bare minimum when you have a thousand more characters like that, and honestly, 
I doubt anyone would even care about this guy if he weren't Mario, but he's Mario, so I guess that gives him a pass, even though he's completely bland and uninteresting. Luigi's my favorite character in the games, and he's honestly as wholesome and wonderful in this movie, but he got the short end of the stick and he's barely in it. The moments we get with him are nice, and honestly, as an only child, he's bro goals. But when the whole movie is supposed to be about how the bros are stronger together than apart in the movie's worlds, it feels like Lester when the emotional core is barely focused on. I want to feel something when they both grab the power star at the end. I want to scream in happiness. But it comes out of nowhere, it makes the epic moment just like, I guess it's kinda cool, moment. The bros that this movie, held this entire franchise is based on, have barely 15 minutes of screen time together. That is a problem when this is your entire movie is even about. Everything else I guess is serviceable. Jack Black as Bowser was awesome, and yes, his song better get an Oscar. I will die on that hill. It does suck that he and Mario don't interact until the very end, considering it's the longest running rivalry in video game history, I should stress. Also not sure how to feel about the simping for Peach part. I know, that's probably what most people would guess from the games. But I always assumed he wanted to marry her for the power over the kingdom, and not much because he actually loves her. But again, this is just me thinking out loud. I can take it or leave it, it doesn't really harm the movie. Speaking of the princess, I'm glad that she went from a useless blank slate to a badass blank slate. No, I don't mind the fact that she is a badass. It's much better than what the games mostly gave us, but it doesn't make her any less bland. How many strong princesses have we seen in movies by now? Yeah, Peach ain't matching in terms of being interesting. Though, she does have some sort of power and commendability in this movie, and that I appreciate. Although, I have to ask, what was the point of her backstory? You see, this is what I mean here. Asking for things to follow through when you introduce her backstory like that, the only human in the Mushroom Kingdom made princess because she's different from all the toads and stuff? Why not focus on that? I know, probably a setup for a sequel, but at the same time, again, we have a movie here. A movie needs some sort of a resolution to it. And if your excuse is just, oh, they'll fix it in the sequel, then that's kind of a fail of this movie. All I'm saying is that this is not too much to ask, and this is not expecting Scorsese levels. This is expecting basic points of a script. Other than that, Toad was a character, I guess, and Donkey Kong was fun. Lack of credit for the composer of the DK rap aside, the action sequences were really cool, as stated. Yes, I know I've done my complaining about this movie, but as I said earlier, I don't think it's a disaster by any means. I just think that as much fun as it can be, it's also fair and even needed to discuss the problems with it. I'm not saying that to rain on anyone's parade or something. By all means, enjoy the movie. But you can enjoy the movie while also acknowledging it has flaws. The Mario movie from 2023 isn't a perfect movie. It's fun and loyal to the source material and it's a good time for the fans, but let's not pretend it's all an excuse for poor storytelling because it isn't. If I'm honest with you, I think the big difference between the critics and the audiences all comes down to one simple fact. People are overly defensive of Mario. Not saying you can't be, but it feels like people are afraid of calling Mario bad or criticize him, even if just a little bit. Some of those critics may make stupid arguments, but it doesn't mean the other portion of them are here to rain on your parade, and it's also possible that they didn't even touch a Mario game, so of course the appeal won't be the same to them as it is to you. It's not a crime, and honestly, as I discussed, they have legit reasons to not like the movie. You know what, let's talk about the Ratchet and Clank movie for a second. If you forgot about this movie, I can't blame you, but I feel it's a good comparison piece to the Mario movie. Now, for the record, I think Mario is a better movie overall than Ratchet, but they both fell and succeed in similar areas. 
Both of them are very bare bones in terms of their story and characters, which may not appeal to the general audience who is not familiar with the franchises. However, both also have a lot of easter eggs and fan service moments for the longtime fans who would smile from ear to ear when they catch them. Both of them also failed to resonate critically and were overall seen as more bad video game movies. Part of the trend, really. The difference? Ratchet and Clank never had such a strong defense from the fan base, while everyone just rushed to protect Mario as if it's perfect. Yes, I'm aware the Mario fan base is much bigger than Ratchet's fan base, but to this extreme? As someone who grew up with Ratchet and Clank more than I did with Mario, because I was a PlayStation kid, judge me, I may have had more fun with that movie the first time I saw it than most critics or general moviegoers. But I wouldn't claim war on them or beg people to see it so that it will make money and show these people are wrong because they criticize the movie about a franchise I love or something. They can say whatever the fuck they want, I can enjoy the movie if it speaks to me. And Mario fans can do the same. Who cares if the critics don't like it? You do you. Which is why I say that if you love the movie, love it. But also keep in mind that a movie you love can have flaws and it's not the end of the world to acknowledge them, and you can still enjoy them despite that. I myself enjoy a lot of flawed movies. I made an entire video about how much I love the first Venom movie, despite it being a flawed mess. I know Mario is this big icon, which means a lot to people, and I'm not judging as I know exactly why he means so much to people. But you can also acknowledge that his new movie isn't perfect despite being enjoyable. I know, I know, complaining about Mario not having a strong plot is kind of a joke in manner, but this applies to a game where the story isn't a big deal. In a movie, story and characters is what you have and that's what you're gonna remember when you walk out. You don't have the brilliant level designs or movesets or cool gimmicks, so a story and characters is what people are going to judge and if they don't resonate with them, then yeah, it's fair. Just because it's Mario, and Mario is basic in plot, doesn't change that. If anything, I think it's because people wanted better for Mario. And if he's starting in a movie, they want to judge it as a movie. For all it's worth though, Mario fans are winning, because this movie is making some good money at the box office, and you know what? I'm happy about that. Mario got his movie redemption after 30 years, and you know what? That's amazing! That's really a good sign for video game movies. So continue enjoying it, everyone, and I really hope the sequel, which is obviously coming, will acknowledge some of the problems the movie did have, so that we can get a truly awesome Mario movie, and not just one which is... fine. And flood. Side note though, is it okay to say I don't really want a Smash Brothers movie? I've seen people talk about this and start to fantasize about it, but actually thinking about it... I don't think it's a good idea, at least not at the moment. For once, we can already see that people are having a shared universe's fatigue, so it might be better to hold on for a while and not rush straight into it. Not everything has to lead into a big crossover in the end, and I should remind you, it brought the death of many other movie franchises, so please never have this as an endgame to begin with. Just because Marvel did it well doesn't mean you have to. And secondly, in order for this to happen, we need all of those franchises to be under the same studio. So we have Mario under Illumination, which is owned by Universal, and Pokemon is under Warner Brothers. And if you really want to make things complicated, we have Sonic over at Paramount. Yeah, realistically, the chances any of them will budge so we could have a Smash Brothers movie? Don't count the lucky stars. And this leads us to another thing, Illumination isn't a good fit for some of those franchises, while Mario is a simple enough premise for them to handle, I don't see them doing stuff like Zelda or Metroid Justice, and I think those would be better at other studios, personally. Actually, you know what, give me Metroid as a live action movie, I would watch the shit out of that. Zelda could work as a DreamWorks movie, and DreamWorks is under Universal, so um... You know what, Miyamoto, get on it! Use your connections. Give us an animated Zelda movie by the people who brought us Puss in Boots 2 and the wonderful How to Train Your Dragon trilogy. I'm in for that. 
whatever future holds for Nintendo's cinematic world, at least Mario's big screen comeback was an overall successful one, even if it had flaws. Continue to enjoy the movie, and please don't pay attention to critics. Sometimes you'll disagree with them, and that's completely fine. Enjoy what does you well and let them be better about all the movies they have to sit through. Until next time, thank you so much for watching my video! Woohoo! I apologize. <laughs>